Hey folks, uh, this lesson is an overview of statistics. It's our first lesson in an elementary uh, statistics uh, textbook. Let's go ahead and get started here. So, uh, let's see, here's some examples of statistics. You guys see them all the time, and whether you knew that or not, they're statistics. So here's one. So women who smoke 1 to 14 cigarettes daily had nearly two times the risk of sudden cardiac death as their non-smoking counterparts. Okay, uh, here's another one. Food waste in the United States has progressively increased from about 30% of available food supply in 1974 to almost 40% in recent years. Okay, so those are just examples of statistics. Here's another one. The percentage of students in Detroit who performed at or above the proficient level for reading was about 7% in recent years. Okay. Those are just some examples, and statistics are used in our everyday life. In fact, statisticians, um, they have a pretty handsome salary, so um, because it is used everywhere. So here's some definitions, you guys. So, so data consists of the information coming from observations, counts, measurements, uh, or responses, okay? So statistics involves the collecting of that, organizing, analyzing that, and interpreting data in order to make your decisions right there, okay? So data sets. There's two types of data sets that we're going to be using in this textbook. The first one is a population. A population is the collection of all outcomes, respond, uh, responses, measurements, or counts that are of interest. So it's a population of everybody. So say um, you wanted to find the, the, the average GPA of the students at your high school. The population would be everybody at the school. Well, oftentimes to get everybody is, is hard and, and time consuming and, and mistake prone. So what we do is we do a sample instead. A sample is a subset or a part of the population. And so most of the time we study samples to make um, some educated decisions on our population. So samples should be represent uh, a represent of the population um, so that some conclusions, some inferences, some good educated guesses could be drawn about the population. Okay, so a random sample is always the best method when collecting data and making conclusions regarding the population. If you don't do a random sample, then your conclusions are most often not a good representation of your population. Okay, so random samples are always the best. So here's an example. In a recent survey, 614 small business owners in the United States were asked whether they thought their company's Facebook page was valuable. 258 of the 614 respondents said yes. So let's identify the population and the sample and describe the sample data. Okay, so the population, you guys, consists of the responses of all small business owners in the United States. Okay, now this doesn't represent all small business owners. That's a sample. The sample consists of the 614 small business owners who responded in this survey. All right, and it says describe the sample data. So the sample data consists of the 258 owners who said yes, and the other ones, which is 356, uh, who would have said no. So that would be uh, describing our sample data, okay? All right, let's try another one here. So the U.S. Department of Energy conducts weekly surveys of approximately 800 gas stations to determine the average price per gallon of regular gas. On December 10, 2012, the average price was $3.35 per gallon. So identify the population and the sample and describe the sample space. Okay, well the population, you guys, consists of uh, the prices per gallons of the regular gas stations at all the stations, the gas stations in the United States. The sample consists of the price per gallon of the regular gas at the 800 that they surveyed in that one survey. Okay, and then the data consists of uh, those 800 prices. Okay, the data set, uh, so it said describe that data set, so it consists of the 800 different prices in that sample. All right, here's some more definitions. A parameter is a numerical description of a population characteristic. Okay. Um, and then a statistics is a numerical description of a of a sample characteristic. Okay, all right. So it's important to note that uh, a sample statistic can differ from sample to sample. Whereas if you're talking about the population parameter, well, it's going to stay the same for the whole population. So when you take samples out of that population, one sample might be probably will be a little bit different than the other. Hopefully, it's a good random sample. 
or it tell whether the numerical value describes a population parameter or a statistic or a sample statistics and explain okay remember population parameter is the whole population so here a recent survey of approximately 400,000 employers reported that the average starting salary for marketing majors is 53,000 okay so it says it's a recent survey so since it's a recent survey this is a sample statistics because the average of the 53 uh, 53,000 dollars is based on the subset of the entire population okay this recent survey said they took a sample of that okay how about this one the freshman class the whole freshman class, the entire freshman class, hint, 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 at the university has an average SAT math score of 514. Well, because the average is based on the entire freshman class, this one is a population parameter. Remember, population means the entire uh, population. How about this one? In a random check of 400 retail stores, the Food and Drug Administration, now this one here, in a random check, that should be key right there. The Food and Drug Administration found that 34% of the stores were not storing fish at the proper temperature. Okay, well this one here you guys, uh, because the percent 34 is based on the subset of the population, it's a sample statistic right here in a random check code word in a random sample right there okay all right last year a company with 65 employees spent a total of five million one hundred fifty thousand dollars six hundred it's one hundred fifty I'm sorry, five million one hundred fifty six hundred ninety four dollars on employee salaries okay well because this represents the entire population of that employee's company, it's from a population, so it's a population parameter. Okay, and because the numerical measurement is a characteristic of that population, that's why it's a population parameter right there. All right, so um, every 10 years, so we just had one um, uh, in 2010, so we got another one coming up in 2020. Every 10 years, our government takes a census of our entire population. Okay, it's impossible to contact everybody in the population. Some people don't have phones. Some people, you know, they're homeless. They can't contact everybody. But to allocate uh, things like public funding, schools, things for like roads and stuff, and uh, even congressional seats, our government attempts to be as accurate as they can. So, so if you're looking for a job in 2020, that's a pretty good way to get your foot in the door of a government business right there. All right, so branches of statistics. So descriptive statistics is the branch of statistics that involves the organization, summarization, or the display of data, okay? Inference statistics is where we make good educated guesses, and it's the branch of statistics that involves using a sample to draw conclusions about a population. Okay, a basic tool in, in this study of inferential statistics is probability, and that's going to be in, a, in about a month or so when we get to chapter three right there. Okay, so determine which part of the study represents the descriptive branch of statistics. Let's go back here. So descriptive dis statistics is the branch that involves organizing summarizing and display of data okay so what conclusions might we draw from the study so using inferential statistics all right so here's the first one a large sample of men age 48 so there's our organization right there was studied for 18 years right here is our organization right here for unmarried men approximately 70 percent were alive at age 65 okay for married men 90 percent were alive at age 65 okay so the statements uh, for for example, of for unmarried men, approximately 70% were alive at age 65, and the other one, for married men, 90% were alive uh, uh, at age 65. Uh, that shows our descriptive statistics. It's describing our statistics. So looking at the figure, our inference can be uh, that we can, uh, that if you're married, you can have a longer life. That would be our, our educated guess. Looks like if married men live longer than unmarried men, something like that. That would be our inferencing, our educated guesses. All right, here's another one. In a sample of Wall Street analysis, the percentage who incorrectly forecasted high-tech earnings in a recent year was 44%. Okay, so the descriptive part um, involves the statement uh, where it says the percent uh, the percentage of who incorrectly forecasted high-tech earnings in recent years was 44%. Can you see how this is describing this statistics? 
So a possible inference or an educated guess that we can draw from this study is that the stock market is a difficult to forecast even for the pros, so they often make mistakes. All right, if you are in my class, uh, you're going to be seeing that as your assignment. Take care.